Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon. I've got a TIG welding project coming up in the next few weeks. I'm going to be welding a cracked hull on a boat. I'm going to try to get myself into shape, so to say, to make a good repair on that project. So today we're going to do some aluminum TIG welding because I'm a little bit rusty. Stick around. So this is my welding rack, guys, and it sits on the end of my bench. The issue that I'm having, you can see how this welder right here is sitting on an aluminum platform. Well, this one doesn't have that platform. It's kind of like up on one side and down on the other, so it's kind of canted a little bit. And you can see it a little bit better on this side. Then you look at this welder, it's got a little piece of plate up here. Then you look underneath and you can see I've just got a little tab welded on each side so that this plate can't slide off but the welder can sit on top of it. These are MIG welds here. I don't know if I used a spool gun or if I pushed it directly through the machine but that's how that was done. I'm going to weld up a couple plates and put a little brace on it and we're going to do some AC TIG welding because I'm a little bit rusty. I absolutely love this rack guys and if you want to see how I built that you can check out the video. It actually comes out, it sits in like a couple little stake pockets that I made down here and attached to the table. This will lift right out. I got some, as you can see, some hooks on the back side. So if you guys are anything like me and you have like a cramped workshop, this is just like the ideal setup because, it, you know, you could put as many as you wanted. You could put three welders here. You could do more on this side with plasma cutters and then have hooks on the outside. I just didn't want it too messy and I don't want too many things going on on this side. But yeah, I have a build video if you guys want to check it out. I think what I'm going to do is I've got some aluminum scrap here. It looks like it's going to probably be about the right length and everything. I think what I'll do is kind of just set it on there like that and probably leave like a space in the middle which will help for airflow this one doesn't have a space in the middle but it would be kind of nice to have that little space and then that little rib that we put across the bottom will hold these two halves together and then the welder will just sit on top of that. This saw is pretty sweet guys. I use this pretty exclusively to just cut aluminum with. Super handy and super accurate. What I like about this saw is that it opens up massive. You can cut huge sheets with it. You can go wider over here. But for what we want to do, we don't need to have it opened all the way up. I just wanted to show you kind of this, uh, some of the stuff you can do with it. Guys, I gotta take this off because I gotta get this piece of aluminum closer to the fence and that'll allow me to get. I'm gonna set my blade just so it passes through that material. That's good. And it's kind of gonna eyeball like a width that I think looks good. Yep, that looks good to me there. So now we got these pieces cut. These are gonna go underneath like this to keep this shelf from sliding off this way. So we're gonna have to get a length on it. So let's see, we'll space this out a little bit. We will make these strips, let's call it nine and a half inches long. I actually measured the top shelf. The top shelf measured nine and a quarter. So let's make it nine and a quarter long. And we'll match that top shelf right there. Perfect. The longer are those two little dots that I just made. Bring this over to my portable bandsaw, flush up these ends. I built this stand. If you want to see how I built it, I'll have a link down below. I kind of got both of these flushed up. I got a speed square on it. I'm going to make a mark about a half an inch in on each side, and that'll be right about where we want our little bracket piece to sit. Maybe we can go in a little bit more just to give it a little bit of play. Call it right there. Perfect. And we'll do another one in. 13 and 3 quarters from that. There. And by no means, guys, am I the authority 
on aluminum TIG welding. Trust me on that. I'm sure you guys that do it every day for a job will have all kinds of comments about it, but I don't do it every day. It's been quite a while since I've actually TIG welded aluminum. And I don't even know what I'm using for a tungsten. I'm using 330 seconds 4043 wire. I didn't dip my tongues in. I'm not really sure why that was doing that. Maybe it was really close and it was arcing it out. Be easy on me guys. So I was having a problem with the tip of my tungsten uh, balling up and I found out that I had my AC balance a little high. Welding is like any other skill. If you're not doing it every day or a lot, then you're going to kind of get rusty at it. Now I have a tendency to do a lot of MIG welding on this channel. It's just kind of like the jobs that come in. I'm inside, more like a fab shop environment. MIG welding is perfect for me. Maybe if I worked outside a lot more and transitioned over that, then stick welding would be better. I'll go over my setup with you, but somebody who's doing this every day would probably find that these settings may not be the ideal thing, but these are the settings that I've used. You can see that I've just started padding a few different beads. These are kind of like later as I was uh, doing it, and these are some of the first ones where I was experimenting with AC balance. Now, this is what I'm using for tungsten, CK Worldwide Laser, 330 seconds. This is a pretty uh, straightforward machine. I like it because it's super intuitive, especially uh, for somebody who's not doing it every single day. So you've got straight AC welding, and you hit it again. You've got AC pulse. That's what that little wave sign is. Then you go over to DC, just straight current. Then DC pulse, and then stick welding. So I'm just up on straight AC welding. Then it's also got a 2T, 4T function in the spot. So 2T, pull the trigger, starts welding, let off the trigger, it stops. 4T, that'd be good if you were, you know, just had long runs to do. You pull the trigger and let off and just you can just go, go, go. Then spot function if you're doing like maybe some sheet welding, sheet metal welding or whatever. Like I said, this is a super intuitive machine. So at the beginning of the menu, I got 7 tenths of 1 second for gas flow. You can change that. Let's go back through it. You can change it. You can go all the way up to five seconds of gas flow before you start uh, welding. So let's just go for a second. Then start current is 40 amps. So meaning that when you initiate it starts at 40 amps. It doesn't ramp up and it'll go right to my maximum setting of 130, but I'm on a pedal. And if you're curious about amperage settings or anything else, there's, there's charts all around the internet so that you know what your amperage should be for the maximum material. I think like one amp per one thousandth of material thickness is like an average of what you can safely use. My hertz is at 100. You may want to be like at 80 for a butt joint and like 100 or 120 for an outside corner. And you'll hear the frequency of the weld increase as you increase the cycle or the duties of the Hertz. 25% AC balance. Some of these machines kind of work uh, backwards to one another. For whatever reason, mine must have got hit because it was on 80% AC balance. And meaning 80% of the power was going into that uh, tungsten so it was like balling it up it was basically overheating the tungsten so once I brought that down to like 25 percent and then I checked to make sure I was getting like good cleaning action because you can see like this haze outside that'll tell you that you're getting good cleaning so I know that 25 percent on this machine is a good cleaning action I could probably even go down to 20 if I wanted to safely do it by the looks of how well this uh, material is coming out so I know that 25% AC balance is good. 
when it was on like 85, the weld was super hot and it extended, that extended way out here, that cleaning action, and it's not necessary to go way out there. Like I said, it was also making the tip of my tungsten overheat and ball up. So the arc was pretty scattered. It wasn't uh, pinpointed like it is here. So we left off at AC balance, and then we have down slope, which that's the time to ramp it down. There is none. It stops at 40 amps and my gas flow after the weld stops is six seconds. This is just a super intuitive machine, guys. Uh, it's really easy to use. That's kind of why I like using this machine. That was kind of one of the things that attracted me to this is you can kind of set it up based on the material that you're welding and it's pretty quick and easy to do. This is when I had my AC balance set up really high. You can just see how it's all like washed out and then you go inside here and you look inside i don't know if you're able to see that let me pick it up you can see where i was just kind of like experimenting on different things and whatever uh you can see like transfer to the inside that's not good that's not a uh, good trait to have that bleed through on the inside of your part and then you can see where i started getting things tuned in a little bit better like over here then you spin it around and that transfer is just about gone so I'm getting the settings just right practicing like I say I've got a boat hull that I need to repair so I'm trying to do this project because it's something that I need for my shop but it's also going to help uh, sharpen up my skills so that when I go to do the boat repair I can at least get my settings right and kind of get back into the to the habit of TIG welding you can see this one's a good one right here it's got good cleaning action on either side Kind of practicing a little bit as we go doing some different things here just trying trying little different things seeing how it's working trying to get my rhythm down then i just did a bunch of experimented with dabbing the material in adding it and pausing just trying to get you know a different rhythm and seeing how different things are working for me yeah like i said guys practice that's what it takes to get good at this and have nice consistent beads and uh, do a nice job and be quick at it. it just takes practice and if all you're doing is stick welding or mig welding and you're not practicing a lot then when you go back into this just like anything that you do and you take a little vacation or a holiday from it, it takes a couple minutes to get back into the saddle of it again but you'll pick it right back up i mean don't don't get me wrong all that muscle memory and all those things that you've learned and those skills uh they'll come right back to you it just might take a little bit and uh but yeah, I, I've always enjoyed uh, TIG welding. It's always been a lot of fun, but it's just always been one of those things that because I don't do it every day, there's kind of like a slight learning curve every time I pick it up versus if I'm going to go MIG weld something right now, I'll just pick it up. I, I can just pretty much pull the trigger and tell you what needs to be done. I don't really have to think about it. Let's do it for real. Let's uh, clean these parts up and see what we get. All right, we'll start by getting a little tack on it first. Well, it's getting better, guys. I mean, I'm not great, but definitely improving. I got a couple tacks on it just to hold it. Now I'm going to... Do probably like a one inch bead here and like a one inch over here. The problem that I'm having is that this piece of material is so thin and so small that it sucks up a lot of the heat as compared to this. So it takes a lot more heat to get this metal to flow than it does for this one. So you can see what's happening is that this is actually starting to like blow apart before the metal on this will start to melt and i'm trying to keep the heat onto this piece but it's just transferring too quickly over into this so i'm not really sure how to like fix that i guess i just got to put almost all the heat onto this and just hope for the best i guess you guys probably can't see it but i've got like some aluminum blocks 
up underneath this so that it this plate doesn't act as like a heat sink and cool down this flat plate here because this is what I'm having a hard time uh, melting first without overheating this little rib here. It's not pretty guys, but I got it done. And what I don't understand is that some welds were running much better than others. Like this one right here, I had to kind of like go over it a couple times versus this one back here, it just started to flow. And then I was just dabbing in rod, it started going in good and then it just kind of stopped going good. So I'm not really sure. And then this one was giving me all kinds of problems too. You can actually see how out back here, it started washing out that band. So I don't really know. Uh, these ones came out a little bit better up here. So I'm just gonna have to practice a little bit more. Maybe I'm not running the right filler for this because uh, I really don't know what this aluminum is either. This is what I'm using, 330 seconds 4043. I don't know, maybe this just is a oddball aluminum that I'm working on because I don't really know what it is for aluminum. It's just a uh, sheet of aluminum that I picked up from the scrapyard off a drop, so I'm not really sure. You know, those little ears on there, the shelf can't slide around. And it's got a nice area for cooling to get up through the bottom. But you know something, that's the great thing about working with different alloys and metals or whatever, because it shows you guys that you know, not everything in the world of welding is like a perfect stack of dimes and everything goes together well like a lot of the YouTube channels show. I was struggling with this. Some welds ran really well, other welds didn't run that great at all. So hopefully you guys don't get overly discouraged and see that because your welds aren't coming out perfect like all the YouTubers do, I'm actually showing you that when you don't do something every day or all the time or a lot of it, I'm struggling with this because I don't do aluminum TIG welding every day. If I did every day, then it would probably go so much easier and I'd have all kinds of tips. But I struggle doing certain tasks just like a lot of you. So I'm hopefully trying to keep it real and let you guys know that sometimes you just got to practice and I think that that's probably what it is for me. I just need to sit down and do more take practice. That's all there is to it. Until next week guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. See ya.